Who? I know. I know usually it's the first day. Yeah. Not on my watch. Correct. We will have Notre Dame coming to the day as shortly. Head coach Muffet McGraw. The five starters from last night will be available in breakout rooms. There's room one and two are here to my left, and then three, four, and five are just down the hall before you get to the locker rooms. We'll have Coach McGraw on the dais until 12.55. So we'll have uh, plenty of time to get to all your questions. Please raise your hand and wait for the microphone.
say something? On the dais now for Notre Dame, head coach Muffet McGraw will start uh, taking your questions. First question right here. Hi Muffet, Howard mm -hmm. Magdal, High Post Troops. Um, I'm hoping you could take me through what you remember the moments uh, around finding out that Jessica Shepard uh, was immediately eligible, uh, what your recruiting was like, you know, I, I mean she really was so much a product of the state of Nebraska you know, her entire life and through college and what that transition has just been like behind the scenes. It's, um, I think that initially she's good friends with Brianna Turner. She knew Enrique and Marina from USA Basketball. So I think she had a, a level of comfort and probably why she made the initial call to us. And then coming on campus felt really comfortable with the girls. The, um, the transition for her I thought was seamless. I mean, she really, she uh, from the first day at practice was the one that was encouraging the freshmen. She was um, picked things up really quickly. She had a great basketball IQ, really understood the game. Uh, so that part was, was pretty seamless. The, the hard part for us was we didn't want to put in a lot of new stuff and run things for her, not knowing if she was going to play or not. So when uh, the day of our exhibition game came, I was home. I got a phone call from Jill Bodensteiner, and she said, Jess is eligible, and I know I was screaming uh, and uh, jumping up and down and couldn't wait to get started and retool the offense to, to uh, uh, accommodate her. Uh, but it was just a, it was a great day because really without her, I mean, we'd have six scholarship players and uh, I, I don't know where we would have been. Question from Doug. Hey, Coach, Doug yeah. Bomberg, the AP. There was a lot of talk last year when Mississippi State pulled off the upset that they were out until about four in the morning enjoying the win and such. I'm guessing you guys, since you've done this before, business as usual after the game and got an early night's sleep and such. Yeah, it was late night, just getting back to the hotel, um, getting something to eat, and, and I think the problem was falling asleep. You know, I think that was the problem. Everybody was uh, was trying. They slept in this morning, and, and that was good. Um, you know, Beth was up all night watching film, but uh, overall, um, I, think, I think everybody feels pretty good today. Question right here. Hey, Coach Ava Wallace from the Washington Post. Um, you've been in Mississippi State's position before where you're coming back after being the runner-up last year. I'm wondering what that does to a team's mindset, if that changes anything going into that championship game. And then if I could ask a follow-up, um, how much of a difference does mindset make in the title game when you've got two teams who are so well-prepared and so talented? Yeah, I, I don't, and nobody on my team has been in this position. Um, you know, I guess possibly Kat and uh, uh, Coco. So it, it's all about the mindset. I mean, it's really, it's all about this is just a game, two teams coming in, um, playing for a national championship. You know, they, they were here last year, they know what it's like. So for us, um, I think just a matter of continuing to do what we've been doing and not let the, uh, the pressure of the moment get to us. <coughs> hey coach, uh, Lakin Lipman with the Indianapolis Star. Um, UConn obviously left Jackie open last night. 
How, what do you do with her heading into this game with Mississippi State knowing that she can score 32 points? Uh, I don't think they're going to leave her open. So I think it'll be a little different defensively. Um, I, I'm, I'm just, I'm so proud for, of her, for her. Um, she is somebody that has always been uh, almost like a secret weapon. You know, she's had some huge games. She was the MVP of our Gulf Coast Classic where we beat South Florida and South Carolina. She, she's played well in a lot of really big games. And even when she doesn't have a lot of points, she seems to hit dagger shots when we really need them, uh, you know, over this past weekend in the Sweet 16. But she's capable of taking over. I think she still defers a little bit to Arike and Marina. And, uh, and I think she proved last night that she's as good as anybody. Question down here in the front. Yeah, Muffet, Pat Borzy with ESPNW. McGowan is such a dominant post. As you try to devise a way to defend her, how does her ability to pass out of the post complicate matters? Yeah, I, I, you know, her she has 17 assists on the season, so you know we're we're hoping that um, she doesn't add too much to that total. Um, but she is a force inside, tremendous player, works the boards like nobody I've ever seen. I mean, she is a tremendous rebounder, um, just a phenomenal player inside. She's so dominant, both ends of the floor. Uh, she's, she's a tough matchup. We haven't faced anybody like that. I mean, Asia Wilson was really mobile and did a lot, a lot more um, away from the basket, but just the sheer size. Um, you know, there was, um, we have a, a player in the league, I think, that's big, but not, not quite as, as wide and, uh, and uh, as dominating as she is. So, yeah, that's, that's, that's going to be a first for us. So, tough matchup. Question over here, Steph. Um, Mitch Stacy with the AP. Just to follow up on that, what do you do? How do you contain McGowan? You know, I, I don't know that you can. I mean, you got to try to get a body on her, but she's just so darn big that, um, you know, you can't out jump her. So we got to try to keep her off. And she does such a great job with her body of getting great position. So uh, I don't know. We, you know, we have a couple of plans that we'll go to, and hopefully one of them will work. Question here. Coach Charlie Cream with ESPNW. Uh, following up on the Jackie Young question, obviously great scorer in high school, but there's always an adjustment period. What steps or what things has she done in the last two years to become the scorer maybe that we, that we saw last night or, or how has her game developed and evolved mm -hmm. from those beginning days? I thought she came back and was most improved player in the summer. Uh, I, I could tell immediately how much time she spent on her game and she really worked on driving the ball. Um, she can go either way, and she really was able to take people off the dribble and finish with contact, which is something not a lot of women can do. So I was really pleased with that, but she, she didn't shoot as much as even her freshman year. Uh, so we tried to get her to look at the basket, but people were guarding her, so she was taking them off the dribble. So, you know, her, her game is, is kind of um, if still evolving. I, I think there's a couple games where she made some big threes. Uh, I'd like to see her shoot more of them, uh, but she's just really comfortable doing either one. So. Hopefully she'll take advantage again. Question right here, down on the right. Hello, Coach Erica with High Post Hoops. Also a question about Jackie Young. I believe and I've read that you've compared her to some of the greatest players to come through your program, mm -hmm. um, and that she might even surpass some of those players like a Skylar Diggins. What have you seen in her development that has led you to believe that that will be the case? You know, I think she's most like Kayla McBride on our team, and. She's somebody that can play the one, two, three, or four position, so she's got the versatility. I think the thing that she does that um, doesn't get talked about a lot is the way she rebounds. She can get inside offensively, especially. She can go up with anyone. She can finish in the lane, but she is just a, a tough matchup um, because she can move. She moves really well without the ball. She's got probably the best vision on our team in terms of finding people uh, for assists. So I think that she has the ability. She has no real weaknesses in her game. She can defend, she can rebound, and she can score. Um, she can pass, she can handle. So she can do all those things, I think, as well as anybody we've ever had. And then, Coach, I also wanted to ask you a little bit about Jessica Shepard. It looked like she might have gotten a little banged up yesterday. What is, uh, how is she feeling? Obviously, she got through yesterday, but how is she feeling? Yeah, I, I don't know that she'll practice today. I, I think that she's probably just going to take it easy. So that's her and Kat will both will be sitting on the sidelines. I'm not sure how much time we'll, we'll put in today. A little bit of a walkthrough, probably. Everybody's a little banged up. So, um, you know, one more day, then just got to give it your all. Michelle? Yeah, Michelle Vogel, ESPN.com. Um, Coach? Vivian's is really Victoria Vivian's has really improved her shooting percentage has become a more efficient player this year I wonder if you could comment on how tough it is to guard her at 6-1 things she can do offensively and then also 
what you've seen of her defensively because she's improved that aspect of her game too. <coughs> she's just a great all-around player. I mean, she's going to be a really tough matchup for us. When you have somebody with her size that can also put it on the floor and, and take you to the rim, um, she is shooting the ball very well. Uh, she can do pretty much whatever she wants offensively. She, she's just really hard to guard. Uh, defensively, she's a, a great presence for them. Their whole team, great pressure defense. Uh, I think Vic does a great job just with her defense and getting up and getting on the ball. So um, she's, she's an All-American for a really good reason. Uh, she is just a great player. Question in the aisle. Yeah, Coach, um, obviously you don't stop McCowan with just one player, but I'm wondering if you've talked with Jessica a little bit about what you're going to need from her inside to kind of take charge and slow down um, McCowan. You mentioned last night that you wouldn't be here without Jessica, so obviously she's going to be important for you tomorrow. So have you had a conversation with her about what you're going to need? We have. Uh, it is literally a tall order. You know, I, I think she's got um, – Jess has a, the strength, I think, to help, but uh, we're, we're going to need to bring some help, um, you know, and, and that's, that's really hard to do, the way they shoot the ball. So they, they're going to spread you out, uh, four out, one in, and uh, make it really tough for us to defend her. But Jess and Coco both are, are going to have that assignment. Question in the back. Hey, hey Muff, Will Seven from the Clarion Ledger. Um, you mentioned it before, just Vic Schaefer's team, Mississippi State, they're going to play a lot of men, apply a lot of pressure. How do you think your team matches up to that offensively? Well, um, I think we've gotten better at it. You know, I, I think that uh, they're a, a, a great defensive team. We haven't seen that kind of pressure as often. I think Louisville is that kind of team defensively as well. So we have had a little experience facing that. Um, we've got to rely on, on our uh, kind of a bring it up by committee. You know, I don't think one person will have the job of trying to attack their pressure. So we'll just see uh, if we can figure out who's going to have the best chance of getting the ball over half court. Question here, Doug. Coach, I remember being in South Bend in January when you played Tennessee. And you were down, I think it was 20 at the half, where the number was, and then came back with an unbelievable win. Do you think that started the belief in yourself? I think the Louisville game was the week before that didn't go that way. That this team thought, okay, maybe we do have something here. We can get this going, and, and now you're sitting one win away from. Yeah, done. absolutely. The Tennessee game was the turning point of our season. Uh, I think the biggest thing was we got a renewed commitment to defense. We played our zone. We played a little differently. We played it well. So in the second half, they could see defense can translate to offense, and it can, can translate to winning. Um, so that, that changed, I think, our mindset. I think we went into games knowing we could defend, and we, could, we knew we could score. But now with the defense, um, we thought we could be a pretty good team. Question, Michelle? Coach, and it's a long time ago. It was 2011. You guys haven't faced Mississippi State, but you did face a Vic Schaefer defense in a championship game back in 2011 when he's with Texas A&M. Um, what are the things that are just characteristic about defenses he coaches that, that make it <laughs> tough? He's got a, a, just a great mind for defensive uh, philosophy. He obviously is, is great at practice, getting his team to do what, exactly what he wants them to do. Um, they are pressure all the time. Uh, they take a lot of pride in their defense. Uh, that's probably the thing that he instills in them is, is how much pride they take in their defense. I think they're known for it. And um, he is somebody that um, I have great respect for. And, and I know that he's, um, he's done a great job at Mississippi State to bring their program to where it is now from where they were when he got there. Uh, two years in a row in the Final Four is not easy. And uh, he's, he's really done a fabulous job. Question down here. Muffet, just a, a little more about Jess. Uh, sort of two parts to this. One, the fact that she's such an effective passer for you, um, how significant is that on a team where you need a lot of people to do more than usual you know, with a short bench? But, but also, when you think about sort of where she can be, given that you know, this is her transfer year, yeah. and so she's sort of done this all on the fly, you know, do you see her shooting threes the way she did in Nebraska for you down the line? Uh, you know, where does her game go from here? Yeah, I mean, she's she's really just scratching the surface, and we, you know, we like her at the elbow in the Princeton offense because she is such a good passer, and that offense is kind of geared to have a center that can really pass. So she's doing a great job there. She is um, going to start stepping out and shooting more jumpers, I think, next year. This year, we really needed her around the basket. Um, you know, when when she steps out, we don't have a lot of rebounding inside, and, and that offense is not. Uh, not really geared for that. So I, th I think next year she'll work all summer. She does get in the gym and shoots a lot now, but uh, I, I would like to see her step out and do a little bit more. And with Brianna coming back next year, obviously we'd have somebody on the inside. 
Question, Michelle? Coach, you guys have now beaten UConn four times in the national semifinals and the previous three once you went on a national championship, the other two you didn't. Can, can you just talk about the difficulty of when you have that? And I know both teams last night had overtime games, but when you have those really emotional, tough semifinal games coming back from that, you've had that experience even if all these kids haven't, and how do you you know, implement that? Yeah, it, it's really tough. Uh, 2011, we beat Tennessee in the regional um, came in and beat Connecticut. Nobody had ever beaten them back to back. And we, I mean, it was like we were done. You know, we were spent. We just, that was all the emotion that we had. Um, we just never really recovered from it. And, and I think it was similar. Anytime you beat Connecticut, because of the dominance of their program, it's just such, a, such an emotional win. Um, it makes it really hard to kind of get back to work. You feel like that should have been the championship game. We should be going home right now. Um, and so it's, it is, it's a lot of emotion. It's a lot of adrenaline. It's a lot. Um, just, you know, on the mental part of your game. So it, it really it really is hard to come back and um, try to gather yourself and just with one day in between, not a lot of time. Down here with Adam. Go Yankees. Yes, go Yankees. Uh, how did they do last night? I didn't even see. I don't know. It was that first first night. That guy hit a couple of home runs. That was yeah. pretty awesome. Good, good start by Stan. Yeah. Uh, congratulations. Good luck tomorrow. Um, I asked some of your student athletes about not feeling sorry for yourself with all the, the injuries. You've, you've talked about resilience and how that's a good word. Um, what, what have you talked to them about, about not feeling sorry? Because that's so easy to do. Yeah. You know, we, we actually didn't really talk about it at, at all. Uh, we just constantly focused on what we have, what we can do, who's going to step up, how are the roles changing, um, what do you need to do now? Um, so we never even talked about where we could be or what we should be thinking. We just kept focusing them on the future. Michelle? Coach, you've had, you've had teams where I think you've defied odds to get here. You've had years where you expected to get here. When you sort of knock on the door a lot, is, is that, how emotionally difficult is that for a coach? Because like you said, you guys, in some years you've done everything except, you know, get the national championship, or have you just sort of grinded through that even though there, there was those disappointments? You know, I, I think that I define success as achieving your potential. And so if we get to a year where we get to the, to the final four, um, and maybe that's, maybe that's the potential of the team. And we, we've had a couple of those years where we got to the final that I really felt like that was one that got away. Um, there was probably two of those. So I think, you know, it's for this group, this is their first time. So uh, I try to look at it in, from their point of view of uh, first time here. Let's see what happens. Question down here, Adam. A lot is made of the injuries, but I haven't seen anything about the status of the young ladies who who are not playing. You, you touched on Brianna about her coming back. Can you just let us know where where they are and their respective paths back? And I haven't seen them. Everybody, I, I imagine they're here with you. Or yeah. Um, well, Michaela Vaughn is uh, way ahead of schedule. She's doing really well. Michael Johnson way ahead of schedule. Michael will be graduating, though she will not be coming back. Um, and Michaela will be coming back. Lily Thompson exhausted her eligibility, so she won't be coming back. Um, so we have two coming back and uh, two graduating. Anything else for Coach McGraw? One more. And I don't, I don't want to assume, but if I could just leave it as a general question for teams that might play zone against a team with as many three-point shooters and then with obviously McCowan inside what are the challenges that that you guys have to do because I know you said after the Tennessee game that was a very important game for you guys defensively to know that you could guard and I'm, I'm assuming that will you know present a pretty big challenge for you guys tomorrow yeah I, I didn't think we'd be able to play as much zone as we did last night and uh, you know you look at Connecticut they're a great three-point shooting team they can all shoot um, we, we thought, you know, let's give it a try, see what happens, see how long we stay in it. And we ended up staying in it for a, a good part of the game. So, you know, we're a team that we can't get into foul trouble. You know, we've got to play a couple possessions of it. So, you know, we'll see what happens. But it, it is a tough matchup with their three-point shooters. Question right here from Doug. Muffet, you've been to a lot of Final Fours. As a Coach Inman, I'm just going to him. It seems like Columbus has done a really nice job so far. I mean, the crowd last night was electric. It was sold out a month in advance. I mean, just what it's you've noticed from this city, its first Final Four, and what it's brought so far. 
this this has been the best um, that we've seen in a long time. Uh, I think from the just from the people in the in the city, the organizing committee, the local organizing committee, uh, what they've done, everything's been first class. Uh, the salute dinner was the best we've ever been to uh, in all of the years that we've been here. Uh, I think everybody's gotten behind it. The crowd was phenomenal, and uh, hopefully they'll all come back for Sunday night's game. But the two great basketball games with a lot of excitement. Um, I, I couldn't be more pleased with the way everything is here from the facilities, hotels, and everything. Anything else for Coach? Thank you. Thanks.